Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Pillar 43 in Enclosure D of Gebekli Tepe is without doubt the most iconic piece of art at the ancient pre-pottery Neolithic site. Researchers have analysed it in detail. Some believe it has archaeo-astronomical significance, some say the iconography is naturalistic, and others say it's ritualistic. But whatever the interpretation, everyone sees the three strange objects at the top. On the internet they are often referred to as the handbags of the gods, due to their likeness to other examples around the world, such as the buckets held by Assyrian demigods, the bags in Olmec art that were used to carry hardened tree sap, bag-shaped objects in ancient North American rock art, and so on. When I first started this channel as a bit of a hobby, when I didn't have many subscribers, I would often regurgitate ideas without doing a great deal of research, and I did make a video on the so-called handbags. This was way before I took the channel more seriously, before I did wider reading, and before I really focused on the detail. And I did make the mistake of comparing these various bag-like objects to try and link the various ancient cultures together. Which, in hindsight, isn't the best approach to understand and interpret history. In effect, I was cherry-picking imagery without actually researching context. Next to each so-called bag, there is an animal on the top, and I didn't even try to understand it or explain it. I also didn't even try to understand why there is this chevron pattern around them. I didn't say why the so-called handle didn't even reach the right hand edge of each bag. I also failed to explain the differences to the other examples we find in later history. I didn't read the work of the archaeologists and researchers that came before me, those that have studied the site already. I can now admit it was a very lazy attempt. On his channel World of Antiquity, Dr David Miano ripped the video apart, and quite rightly so, because now I can really see that this video is quite embarrassing, and it's something I'm not proud of. But I don't regret making it, because as anyone knows who has followed Ancient Architects over the years, this channel has charted not just history, but also my own progress and journey as an independent researcher. At times I still make speculative claims, but I am clear that's what they are, and I try to do so with as much detailed research and quality sources as possible. Before making any claims, I read the work of those that came before me, from historians, geologists, climatologists, archaeologists, independent researchers, and so on. In the end I make up my own mind with regards to interpretation. And for me, any new claims must be based on evidence, and I can't overlook the inconvenient information against such claims. You have to lay out all of the information, all of the evidence and all of the data, and then try and make sense of what we are looking at. So, with all that in mind, many years after starting this channel, and making a very lazy video on the so-called handbags of Pillar 43, I've gone full circle as I take another look. Although these objects could be interpreted as bags or buckets, and because there is a superficial likeness to examples carved and drawn many years later, it doesn't mean that is what they are, and we do have to get that out of our heads if we want to have an unbiased look at the symbolism. Taking it back to basics and what do we see? We have a rectangular shape with a semicircular arch on top. And, unlike a bag or a bucket, the right hand edge sticks out, and there we see an animal depiction. On the left one is a bending bird, then we see a pouncing lion or panther, and then an upside down crouching animal. We find all of these creatures depicted in a very similar way at many pre-pottery Neolithic sites in Turkey, including on the pillars of Gebekli Tepe. Researcher and scientist Martin Swetman interprets the three symbols as solstice and equinox sunsets, with each animal being an astronomical marker, so we know which event is being depicted. Martin has championed the archaeo-astronomical significance of Gebekli Tepe, and I've covered his work before on this channel. 
If you want to learn more, I've linked his channel and my video in the description below. What I'm doing in this video is focusing on another interpretation, originally made by E.B. Banning in his 2011 paper, because his idea really doesn't get as much airtime as it should. It's an idea that's been built upon by other archaeologists, and it was mentioned in the paper I cited in my last video on the Gobekli Tepe bone artifact. Regarding the three objects on Pillar 43, the German archaeologists mention an animal is on the arch, and then they say, and I quote, The meaning of these images is hard to fathom, but they might represent the enclosures during their time of use and seen from the side. They continue, The rectangular part would represent the perimeter walls, whilst the cupolas may indicate roofs. As usually, depictions of one animal species seem to dominate in every enclosure, it is an intriguing thought that buildings of different groups are depicted here, with the emblematic animal of these groups added for recognition. Before we go further, let's just take a look at the claims regarding the animal reliefs inside the enclosures. In a 2012 paper by Becker et al, the archaeologists explain how it's possible Gebekli Tepe was a meeting place for various groups living in the area. This is because, due to a lack of domestic finds, there isn't enough evidence it was a permanent settlement. It was likely a place to exchange relationships, food, ideas and so on, maybe a place for rituals and celebrations. Therefore, each group that converged at the site had their own enclosure, and each group also had their own animal emblem. Enclosure A is dominated by snake representations, so maybe this was the enclosure of the snake clan. Pictures of boars dominate enclosure C, and so maybe this was the enclosure of the boar clan, and so on. It is a nice idea, but if these objects on the top of Pillar 43 are enclosures, they are rather schematic, almost like a technical cross-section and this would be an unusual depiction. And so, just like the bone spatula, this interpretation of the objects on Pillar 43 is by no means certain, and unless we find more examples, we can probably never know for sure. In Banning's original paper from 2011, he discussed whether or not each Gebekli Tepe enclosure had a roof, and, if so, it does give the three objects on Pillar 43 a viable interpretation. Obviously, if it's found out they did not have a roof, then these can't be the enclosures. I'll discuss the roof hypothesis in a separate future video, but it is something I do believe is correct. Banning also briefly mentions that the chevron pattern around the three objects could well be vegetation, and archaeologist Bahatan Selig added to this idea in his 2021 paper on plant motifs in Neolithic Turkey. The paper is written in Turkish, and so I've had to rely on Google Translate, and it really isn't the best but he believes the V-shaped motifs around the so-called enclosures are actually fences made from willow branches. Apparently, the row of square shapes in the middle of the fence is what is keeping the branches together. Although now uncommon, some fences are still made of willow branches in this part of the world, and these are tied together in the centre to keep them clumped together. In this picture from Eartha in the early 20th century, which, as you can see, I've tried to colourise, we can see another example of fences made from branches. According to Selig, the modern examples of the fences are arranged to make an upside down or straight V shape, just as we see on Pillar 43. They also have a horizontal braid in the middle to hold the fence together, which, as stated, is the row of squares on the pillar. These fences would have been used to keep wild animals away from the main enclosures of Gebekli Tepe, in the same way that homes, crops and livestock are fenced off today. So, that in a nutshell is the archaeologist's interpretation of the upper portion of Pillar 43, and I have to say it does work for me. Of course, it is open to debate and discussion, and the experts even admit that any interpretation can never have complete certainty and that's due to the nature of pre-pottery Neolithic art. 
Furthermore, if one day it is proved that each enclosure never had a domed or corbelled roof, then, of course, the interpretation will be proven to be wrong. But, as stated, I do believe that each circular enclosure of Gebekli Tepe, as well as the large enclosure at Karahan Tepe, did have a roof on top, and I'll be discussing this idea in more detail in a future video. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.